ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It is Thursday, August 24th, your drive. It begins right now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can be a part of the program this hour by calling us directly on our text line. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Yeah, it's just me today, so we're going to have to do the text. That's fine. Looking forward to getting some of your text. And we'll do, we'll do that here in the next few minutes. And again, that number is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Coming up on the program today, we are going to be talking to the head football coach of the state champion, Huntington Highlanders. That's coming up about 530. And then about 515, we're going to talk about Marshall Cross Country, a couple of Good things happening for the Thundering Herd today. The preseason polls are out. And Marshall's women's cross-country team picked second in the Sun Belt Conference preseason poll. And then the men's cross-country team picked third in the poll. So we'll talk a little bit more about the polls with, of course, the boss himself, Marshall's uh, cross-country coach. Caleb Bowen. So he'll join us here in the next few minutes. So looking forward to talking to him. Until then, the text line is wide open for you as we get closer to the start of college football. We're getting almost there. A lot of action tonight. We've got some high school football action as well tonight across the Mountain State. So a big one is coming up. You can, of course, check that game out on our Facebook page. Or our website at wrvc.com. We got a really big one tonight. So tomorrow we got the Highlanders taking on the Timberwolves, but George Washington will face off against Cabell Midland. That is coming up, and it is happening tonight. Our broadcast will go on the air about 7:30. 8 o'clock is when you know you can pick up the stream, and of course. We're going to have that game for you. It's part of our digital game of the week. It's the Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week, presented by the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute. It is fueled by your neighborhood Parmar stores. So, big game tonight. So, we've got high school football to get into the next few days. We've got Marshall the following week. Of course, that means I'll be trying to scout you Albany. They take on Fordham. That's their game. They open it up week zero, and I'll be keeping an eye on that one. Kind of figure out a little bit more about this squad. They are in a big conference, the CAA, and they were picked, I believe, 11th. They were picked 11th, and so we'll see if this team is a little bit better than maybe what the – the preseason polls are saying about them, but that's next week. We'll keep an eye on the game coming up this weekend. So we've got some soccer news to talk about briefly before we hit our first break. Sunbelt doing well in the preseason ranks when it comes to soccer. And good news for Marshall, sophomore Marshall University men's soccer student athlete, Matthew Bell. That's how he's referred to in the release, so that's what I'm going to use. He was named to the 2023 Missouri Athletic Club Herman Trophy watch list. He's the Sunbelt Conference Freshman of the Year for 2023 and a first-team All-Conference awardee. Ten goals last season, tied for the Sunbelt Conference lead, named to the league's preseason All-Conference team, so he should. And the Herman Trophy is presented annually by the Missouri Athletic Club. Basically, this is the Heisman for soccer. It's the highest individual honor, the National Player of the Year. And this is determined by Division I coaches, voting coaches, members of the United Soccer Coaches Organization. So if you are voting... 
I think you're going to have to take a serious look at Matthew Bell. So he's named to the watch list. And he's not the only one. A couple other players from the Sun Belt making the list, both from UK. So two players from UK, one from Marshall. Who would have thought that the biggest rivalry between Kentucky and Marshall would have to be soccer? It's not football. It's not basketball. It's not any of the other sports. It is soccer. I think we're all better for it. So congratulations to Bell for picking up that nod. And, of course, preseason watch lists are great. It's fantastic to get your name on one of them. People are paying attention to what you're doing. It's where you finish, of course, is what really matters. You can be on a a slew of watch lists. If your team doesn't do well, you're probably not going to do well. You might have a great individual performance, but you might fall off just because your team's not doing well. That stuff matters. It's factored into it. Is anyone from a losing team ever going to win the Heisman? Probably not. You could be the best player in college football, but if you're on a losing team, you're not going to get maybe the nod that someone else would because, again, you're you're on a squad that's losing. So hopefully the success that uh, Chris Grassy usually brings on the pitch will translate into at least some consideration for Matthew Bell. So that's what we've got today as far as what's happening with the Thundering Herb. We're going to turn our attention to cross country, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we continue. We're going to bring in Marshall's cross country coach, Caleb Bowen. He's going to talk to us about what this means both for the women and the men. Later on, we'll talk high school football with you. We've got Billy Seals, head coach of the Huntington Highlanders. He's coming on the program. So we've got a lot to get into, and we're going to do that when we continue after the break here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to our Thursday edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. It's preseason poll time for cross country, both men and women. The Sun Belt Marshals women's squad picks second in the Sun Belt Conference preseason poll. The men, they get the third spot in the preseason poll. This is basically where everyone thinks that these teams are going to finish. Not necessarily unanimous. Uh, Some coaches vote higher. Some coaches vote lower. But you add it all up, and the women are picked second in Sun Belt, and the men are picked third. And to talk a little bit more about what this means, we bring you on to the program now. The guy that's got to make all this stuff happen, head coach Caleb Bowen. Busy uh, busy season for you. You've got the second-best team in the preseason and the third-best team in the preseason. It doesn't get much better than that. I mean, just a couple more spots, and you're the top dog. Yeah, I mean, I, we would like to be number one. But then again, I'd rather have a chip on our shoulder going into the championship. And I want – young glad we're respected enough to be considered high up there. But I definitely don't want to be, you know, the target on our back or anything. We want to be the ones going after everybody else, if that makes sense. So, as the number two team in the women's side – you have a chip on your shoulder because you're second, because you're not first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Arkansas State uh, ranks number one for both men and women, and that's very deserved. They have a great squad. Um, they did a great job recruiting, especially mid-year last year. So they had lights out track seasons, both men and women. Um, so I think they deserve that spot. Um, but I do think it's going to be extremely competitive uh, first, second, third. I mean, the thing is we tied for second you know we're tied with southern miss and james madison so it's gonna be a dog fight between us three teams there so second for the women tied and of course with the men third you like that respect but at the same time you can't really rest on this this is a preseason poll here i mean it's great that you're getting a lot of this attention notoriety but at the end of the day when you talk to your when you talk to your squad you know what do you tell them as far as when they look at this stuff because you know they're looking and you know they're reading it they're hearing it 
know, it's one of those things where you don't want to, like, calm the fire down. You know, it's something that's supposed to make them excited and, you know, get them to appreciate the respect that the other coaches have. But at the end of the day, I tell the kids, like, hey, we're here to run our best race on October 28th, the championship. And everything we do between now and then is to get us as fit as possible for that day. So we're going to be running up over like a thousand miles per kid in order to get to that point. So let's just focus on day by day, you know, mile by mile, and just crank the, the mileage up. That's that's really what matters the most is just putting the work in and letting the dice fall where they are when we get to the championship. You know, we're going to be going after it. We're going to be really gritty and tough on race day, but you know. The main thing is, in order to be that way on the championship day, is to make sure that you're doing all the right things day in, day out, getting enough sleep, getting enough recovery, you know, putting the hard work in. You know, some of our guys are running over 90 miles a week. So just doing all the little things in order to get to that point at the championship. You know, we want to be as prepared as possible. My guest is cross-country coach Caleb Bowen. The Thundering Herd on the men's side picked third preseason poll. The women picked second. So what are you excited about? As you look at your squad, who do you look at and you get really excited about that's either coming back or coming in? You know, that's hard to like to single out a couple people because, you know, I will say the entire squad, both men and women, did a great job of like doing all the work this summer. You know, I send out training plans for them to follow during the summer, but you never really know what you're going to get until they come back. Just as, you know, you can't make them do anything over summer. You just give them a plan and hope they do it. Um, but everybody came in super fit. On the women's side, I mean, we're definitely blessed to have Abby Herring back for her fifth year. She was teeter-tottering whether she like wanted to come back, but she decided that she wanted to have one more go-around, and we're, we're definitely excited because she is fit as all get out. Um, I mean, she got fourth last year, and she had COVID last year at the championship. So getting fourth with COVID, I mean, it's not exactly the best scenario. And she still ran well. So you have her, you have Kylie Maston, who had a great cross-country season last year, but it's an even better track season. I mean, she became just a force to be reckoned with, getting all con- first-team all-conference in the uh, – in the 1500, she scored in the 800 as well. I mean, she's she's a stud. Um, and then we have Hannah Weiler, who's a sophomore. She has gotten so much better over last year. I mean, she is just insane. Plus, we have some you know, some incoming freshmen who I think are going to really add to that. So Hannah Toth, Taylor Spencer, and then you know ladies like Asha Bora, Megan Ward, Corey Dodson, Kaylee. I mean, we have a ton of a big group of girls who are competing for that fifth through seventh spot. So that that competition is just going to make us a much better team. And then on the men's side, I mean, Ronnie Saunders, ever since we added men's track, he has become a new animal. Uh, He got second in the conference in the steeplechase last year. And, I mean, this is the first time the kids ever run the steeplechase, and that's a very technical event. You know, you do barriers and water jumps and all that stuff on the track. And he has just trained his butt off. And he's, I mean, we have a four-mile time trial we do every year. And he ran about 45 seconds faster than anybody's ever run. So watch out for him. Um, a guy like Evan White, who was at the all-conference last year, he's going to be right up there with uh, with Ronnie. And then Matthew Schoenberg, Brandon Wood, newcomer Garrett Ferguson. I mean, a lot of guys are going to be competing for that top five spot. So it's a good squad. Probably the most excited I've been for a team on both genders uh, since I've been here. And I've been here for eight years. So very excited. Why do you think it's progressed this far? You know, what's what's the secret sauce that's uh, getting it to the point where you want it? I mean, there's a few things. Uh, really, the culture that we've built, you know, over the past eight years, it's just gotten better and better each year. Um, recruiting wise, I've gotten really lucky. I won't lie. Like Abby Herring was a 520 miler whenever I recruited her. Now she's like a 449 miler. So, you know, getting those people who not aren't necessarily the you know, best high school recruits, but that really buy into the program, buy into the training, you know, have a really good trust between me and them about their training. I mean, that's just, that's all you can ask for. And it's, it's special. Um, You know, so a little bit of luck in that regard with recruiting and such, but also just a lot of hard work in recruiting because we're constantly trying to find the best people that want to be here at Marshall. 
Um, but yeah, adding men's track, like I said earlier, I mean, that's been huge for our men's team. And I will say we would not have gotten fourth last year had we not made the announcement about adding men's track beforehand. You know, that got everybody excited and they trained harder. They were more motivated at meet. Yeah, you because know, it just means more. They're actually just like everybody else in the NCAA that has all three programs. And I think that's huge. Um, yeah, and just, you know, I think we treat our kids right. You know, we get them all the best stuff that we can. And, you know, we've added more stuff like the what we call the training table, the fuel counter, stuff like that that helps them with, uh, you know, having food and the right dorms and stuff. I just think all that together is a good, good scenario. Joining us on the program to talk a little bit about cross country is Caleb Bowen. Now, I know you're excited for the upcoming season, but I'm looking at the schedule poster right now. It's very prominently placed in this studio of mine, so I can look directly at it, <laughs> and I can see there are several events in green. Now, I guess that means that those are events that you will be at, not in Huntington. You'll be at those events, but there's one event in white on this schedule poster. I don't know if you know about this. It's the Thundering Herd Invitational that is coming up later in September. How excited are you? Oh, I mean, it's going to be an adventure, that's for sure. Um, Yeah, definitely excited. It's something that we've been trying to do for years now. Uh, Just, you know, it's hard. It's hard to, you know, just create a meet out of nothing. But, you know, this administration has been really helpful in pushing for a home cross-country meet. And we've gotten, you know, the right people in the right places, like at the YMCA Kennedy Center that are allowing us to have a meet there. They've been really supportive and they have, they already have like part of the course already marked and everything. It's perfect. And I don't know, it's just going to be really special to have a, somewhere that we can call a home for cross country. I mean, we have an indoor track and that's amazing for track and field, but this side of it, you know, we've always had to travel to all of our meets. And it's even more special for the parents to just be able to drive a little bit rather than going all the way to Texas or Alabama or wherever we go. I mean, this is going to be really cool. And hopefully we gain some pains out of it, too. Um, I'm excited for various reasons because the course is going to be fat, flat and fast, which is always uh, ideal for the kids wanting to run PRs and stuff. Um, who knows what the weather's going to be like? I don't want to jinx it. But I think it's going to be a top-of-the-line event. And, I'm, I mean, I'm going to work as hard as I can to make it one of those. Uh, and I know we have the right people in place to help that as well. But I think it's just going to be special. You know, having the Thundering Herd cross-country invitational, it's going to be a fun experience. And we're going to have some good teams here, too. I mean, mostly smaller teams, especially within the state. But they're they're pretty good. I mean, Davis and Elkins is always a tough distance squad. Uh, Moorhead State focuses on distance. Wesleyan has a good, well-rounded squad. Uh, West Virginia Wes- or sorry, West Virginia Wesleyan and Glenville and uh, West Virginia Tech. But, you know, it's just gonna be a good, uh, good little competition. You know, we don't want anything too big, especially for our first one. But it's something we want to grow, you know, as years progress, and we want it to be a really big event that a lot of people like to come to. So when you put this event together, you know, what are you trying to specifically design to attract teams and also at the same time? Yeah, be something that you can be competitive in. That's challenging, but you got to have that home track advantage everywhere, right? So you know, you know the course better than everybody else, but you still want it to be attractive. I mean, just logistically, if you walk me through a little bit more of that. You know, as far as trying to put this together, because it's been a while since we've had one of these. Yeah, yeah, it has. I, I mean, I don't know exactly when the last one was. We have gone through a lot of our meet programs for team programs that have been stashed away in our closet forever. And the the latest one we found is 1989. So if there's if there's one in the 1990s, early 1990s, then you know that might be a little bit more up to date. But 1989 is the last one I saw. Um, you know what we're trying to make or to get out of it is a course that's going to be very forgiving for the athletes. And what I mean by that is you want it to be mostly all grass if, if possible. Just for injury purposes, I mean, if you're running on harder surfaces, yeah, it can be faster, but you're probably going to be more beat up. And that early in the season, we don't necessarily want to go over the top with that. So we created a course that was like, I mean, it's 100% all grass. There might be a couple of places where you cross over roads and stuff, but for the most part, it's all grass. Um, And then it's also very well cut just because they have.
have high school meets there. They have a soccer complex. They have the fly-in cafes, the uh, airport that runway that we're going to be running on. So it's a course that's going to be very fast. It's all flat. There's like a 10-foot hill in it, so I don't consider that a hill. And I think running on the runway, the airport runway, is going to be super cool because you have all these airplanes stashed on the side. You have the Ohio River on the left. And it's just a straightaway that's almost 1,000 meters. So one cool aspect, which may not be as cool as whenever they're running it, but you're going to be able to see the entire field of athletes whenever you're going around that field. And that's going to be super cool, in my opinion. As a spectator, it's been great because you can see everybody all at once. Um, and that's another thing, too. We try to make it as spectator-friendly as possible. So there's certain parts that it will be tough for you to get to, but if you stay within like the start-finish line area, you're going to see a ton of the course. And I think that's really beneficial for coaches, for fans, for family, to be able to stay in one spot and see a lot of it. So as coaches, we're, it's great because we can get mile markers and splits and everything without sprinting five miles or whatever. Um, but then again, you know, it's more about the fans in that regard, you know, having them be able to watch the course and watch their athletes run. Now, if this works out the way you, you hope, you know, it'll expand, it'll grow hopefully to something you know, bigger and better. But, you know, how, just how important is it to have the home event for your athletes? You know, you, you, you try to improve facilities, you try to improve everything you possibly can, but now just to have an event that you can call your own, you know, how, how important has that been to get this going and what kind of dividends will this pay? Well, I think it'll pay like dividends for years and years to come. I think there's there's two different parts for it. Um, a place to train is going to be huge. You know, we're going to go there a couple of different times throughout the year to get you know more grass specific training, um, and that's going to help us with this this race, but also other races as well. Um, so we'll note the course, we'll have a good idea what it's like, but also that's just more grass running, which in Huntington is harder to find. Uh, we go to Barbersville Park a lot. We go to Ritter. But for the most part, it's all crushed gravel type stuff. So having grass is definitely beneficial. Um, and, and just having a place to call home, I think it's really special. Because um, really not a lot of teams have a home course. You know, there's a few. And most we, most teams that have one, you know, they've had, had that established for years and years and years. So... I think it's something that will become bigger and bigger just because more and more teams will see the times that are run on that course and they'll be like, oh, I want to get a part of that. I want to experience that. And it's going to be more special for our athletes because other teams will want to come and Marshall will be a destination for cross country, um, just like Louisville is, just like Notre Dame is, just like Paul Short, which is in Lehigh University. You know, There's these classic courses, and I think ours can be one of those you know, if we do it right. Maybe we can get some grass put around the baseball park and some area, other areas. What do you think? You know, let's let's just grass that area up a little bit. You, you know, just oh, an, as, as an alternative. I think, need, I think we need to have some rec fields, and that way football can practice. Have like a couple different practices out there. I think soccer could use a couple practice fields. We would definitely use it. I mean, I'm all for grass fields because um, it's just it's so huge in terms of just being able to recover without beating up your leg. You know, getting mileage on soft surfaces. And what could happen is they could be playing a baseball game, and then you could have, you know, you know we want to do some practice. You know, one of the challenges <laughs> is uh, if a homer is hit, you know, somebody can run out and catch it out of the ballpark. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? We could help Bills out there. Yeah, I, mean, I think Bills would definitely appreciate that. Um, and we get some more miles in. So that's a win-win. And keep this in mind. Yeah, we could have little friendly, I don't know, inter squad competitions. Let's see, you know, yeah, are base runners faster than your squad? Let's find out. Hmm. You like this uh inter sport competition, I've noticed. I do, yeah, I do. Like no, the, I'm the I'm all for it. I'm all for it. And, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm all for it. <laughs> I like pitting teams against each other. I just wanna you know, I just wanna watch. Yeah, it's friendly. It's it's yeah. all it's all for a good cause. You know, my my amusement. But it I is. I like it. I mean, come on. Yeah, you know you're scouting right now. You're 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 looking at basketball going, hmm, okay. Just get a little bit more vertical there. I could use him or her. You know, you're scouting, yeah. you know you are. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I don't as much, but you know, in track and field, definitely, because like the field events, you you always see those people are like, man, he would probably be a really good high jumper, or or you're like a softball player, you're like, they could probably sprint because they're a base runner. Yeah. No, I, I think I'd you. Uh, get my I, athletes from the soccer team, though. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that makes more sense for you. But yeah, I can see that you're looking. You're probably thinking, hey, um, you know, we need to bring this. We need to bring this person on. We need to. Yeah. Yeah, we need to do that. I mean, I can I can see you can cross over to other sports as well. I, I'm just trying to come up with all kinds of ways to help. That's what I do. <laughs> yep, sounds good. It's it's going to be exciting. Um, it looks like it's going to be fun this year. Definitely exciting to have an event that you can call your own and be able to attract more people, attention wise, and get the athletes interested. You know, and as you mentioned. Yeah, a lot of schools, a lot of universities, institutions have teams. They don't have a place. Now you've got both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's going to be huge. You know, um, what I would love to have is get like Ohio University, West Virginia University, schools like that that don't have a, like a home cross country course or not a very consistent home cross country course, and then make it like an annual thing where we race against these you know pretty good teams every year. Uh, it's going to make us better, and hopefully make them better. Okay, I like it. And w- would this all be the Thundering Herd Invitational, or would you want to try push for more home events? Uh, well, to be honest, I, I like traveling, too, and seeing new courses. So like, I don't want to always be at home. Uh, so let's just start with one for a couple of years, and then if we, you know, if it does become bigger and it's almost too big, then we could look at possibly splitting it. But you know, I foresee just have keeping it in that September, like early September or mid September weekend, uh, just because I want something consistent, something that you can always depend on, and and to like we want to get access to like our regional course every now and then. Louisville is always going to be an option for us because we love racing there, and it's only three hours away. Um, and like this year, we're going to Texas A and M mainly to scope out a lot of the conference schools in that area. You know, the Louisiana, Texas. Arkansas type region, um, we never see them ever. So we wanted to get, just have a trip where we can see them in a, in a meet that's not the conference championship. So hopefully we'll be a little more prepared for the conference championship by doing that. It's been good talking to you again. We'll do this soon and, of course, get a little bit closer to the event itself. But I'm excited for you. It looks like cross country is going to be, again, you know, really strong and competitive and hopefully at the end of the day we're talking about some championships for you that's what we're hoping i mean that's why we're here so yeah it's a good group yeah i, I can gloat on them all day but there are better people than they are runners that's a really cool thing they're pretty good runners and it's been an awesome experience being their coach i appreciate you doing this today we'll get you back soon i appreciate it very much yeah sounds good i appreciate you thanks caleb that's caleb bowen a lot happening for cross country. Uh, the women pick second in the Sun Belt Pole, the men third. When we continue, we'll be speaking with the head coach of the Huntington Highlanders, Billy Seals. That's coming up on this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We're taking Paul Swan everywhere. Download or subscribe to The Drive with Paul Swan on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to our Thursday edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. High school football season in the Tri-State getting underway last week in Ohio and Kentucky. West Virginia tonight, tomorrow. We're finally back into football season. And to tell us some more about his upcoming season is the head coach of the defending Class AAA state champion, Huntington Highlanders, Billy Seals. Uh, That doesn't get old to say that. It never gets old. Well, yeah, yeah. to a point, you're right. It, it doesn't get old, but, you know, obviously we're excited about, you know, what, what this 23 team is going to be about. And, uh, you know, our first test, big test, is tomorrow night. At what point did you tell your team that it's great that you won the state championship for the kids that are coming back, but that means nothing now? Is there, uh, did, you know, did that happen early on, or did, it, did they just know it? Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't have to say a whole lot about it. They, um, you know, our kids turned their focus to the 23 season in January and, 
you know, obviously they, they were excited about getting rings and things in, in March, April. And, but, you know, I think our kids have been focused on, you know, what are they going to accomplish this year and understand that, you know, what the 22 team did is, is history and it's in the past. And, you know, what, what legacy is the 23 team going to leave is, is kind of kind of what we've kind of talked about each and every day. What are you most excited about as you look at the squad top to bottom? Uh, the one thing that I keep hearing about your team, I'm talking to some folks with Ashland when you scrimmage them, uh, they all remarked how fast your squad was, and I've even heard it said, you, you correct me, that this might be the fastest high school team that a lot of people have seen in a long time. Well, I'll be honest with you. you know, I like where we're at. and um, Obviously, we've got a tremendous uh, group of athletes that make plays all over the field, and you know, um, you know, I would say we're a fast team, but I would say there's a lot of fast teams out there. So, you know, we got to play physical. You know, football's still one in the line of scrimmage. So you can have all those great athletes you want, but if, if you can't win the line of scrimmage and you can't run the football and stop the run, then, then you're going to have a difficult time. Returners coming back, who, um, who are you most excited about? I know that's kind of hard to pick maybe one or two, but uh, if, if you look at who's coming back, who are you most excited about seeing out there on Friday night? Well, I think, you know, all our guys that, that are returning, you know, see the progress they've made from last year to this year. You know, you look at a kid like Zod Jackson, who played at 165 pounds last year, and he's about 181 now. Uh, he's gotten bigger, stronger, faster. So, you know, all of our kids, you know, they've all worked really, really hard this offseason to be the best football player they can be so that we're the best football program we can be. and so. So I'm really proud of what they've accomplished this all season, and and again, our first test is, is tomorrow night against a a program that I respect and a coach that I respect, the Brad Dingus. Big one, of course. Uh, it's always fun to start off with a game like this one. Not that your kids need any extra motivation to get their attention, but it feels like there's always um, an extra extra pep in a lot of people's uh, step when it comes to. Spring Valley, Huntington High, that just means something to hear these two are playing. Well, it does. You know, as a coach, you would much rather not open up with somebody as as good as Spring Valley or some of the other teams we play. And, you know, you like to build. Because the first game, you just don't know, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, you don't know what you got. You don't know who can do what. Um, You know, so it's a lot of unknowns. But, again, I like how our football team's prepared and I like how they're, they're focused in and, you know, today's practice, they were excited and they were looking forward to uh, to the to the game tomorrow night. And winning a state championship doesn't hurt as far as generating interest. Uh, was this your best turnout in a long while, you think? Yeah, it really is. You know, in, in 13 when we lost and 21 when we lost, our, really, our numbers really didn't, didn't change. But I, I've seen a huge increase this year. I think we've got 79 kids on the roster, which is the largest team we've had since I've been there. And, you know, I think there's excitement in the program. There's excitement in the city of Huntington about what these young men can accomplish. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to be a part of it and excited to get an opportunity to coach them every day and, and see what they can do. You think it's just on top of the championship that definitely – generates a lot of excitement but do you think now you're just at the point now with your culture and what you've been building over the years that you know this is maybe the end product now that you're going to have larger turnouts because you've been doing this for a while Billy I don't know how long we've been together doing this but it's been a long time yeah this is my 14th year in Huntington so uh you know it's um it, it was a process obviously and you know I felt like that we had goals set up when I arrived in 2009 and you know, our our goal was by year five be in the state championship. And, uh, you know, in year five, we were in the state championship. So, you know, I think we've continued to progress as a program. I mean, in the last 10 years, we've made, I think, five five semifinals um, and, and, and three title games in the last 10 years. So I just think our kids expect to win every Friday night. They know what it takes as far as what you got to do in the off season to prepare yourself. And so, so I like our, our, our team culture. I like, you know, our kids understand what's expected. And I don't have to go in there and beg and plead for them to, to work hard. They know that that's, that's what it takes to be successful. 
Billy Seals is with us, head coach of the Huntington Highlanders. So you've got action tomorrow. I'll remind everyone we've got the game on radio and video stream, radio side here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. The video stream, you can log on to our website, wrvc.com. That'll get you linked over to everything, and, of course, Facebook as well. I know you're doing some family things right now. Are you going to try to keep an eye on a few ball games tonight, or are you going to just lock in on yours? Uh, you know, I think it's good to sit back and watch other teams. And, uh, you know, obviously when I get home tonight, I'll sit back and watch the Cabell Midland GW game as we play GW in a couple of weeks. But, you know, for us, um, you know, we, we've done all we can do here this off season, these last couple of weeks on Spring Valley. And, you know, let's go out and play football and see what happens. Yeah, that's a big one tonight. Yeah. I'm surprised you're not just, yeah, you know, I don't know your schedule, but uh, you thought about maybe just going to it instead of watching it on the video stream? Because I know you're a coach, so you want to see everything. Yeah, but now nah, I'm not going to. We, we've been practicing at 630 every night this week. And so, you know, I've been getting in the office at 615 in the morning and leaving at 930 at night. So uh, you know, I'm going to go home, spend some family time, watch the game tonight, and, um, you know, get get focused in and get our call sheets ready for the, for tomorrow's game with us. You know, it's going to be fun. I'm glad we could do this just to kind of remind folks that the, the game was tomorrow where they can listen to it, get people excited and show up. I know it's just easy now. The game part's easy for you. I mean, we're finally here. You know, practice and everything, that should be the hard part. It should be easy on game night. Yeah, you know, the big things go out and have fun. Enjoy, you know, enjoy high school football. There's nothing like it. Um, you know, you, if you get an opportunity to play at the next level, it's a job. You know, and then, then obviously if you're good enough, as, as Darnell Wright was, it, it's definitely a job at that level. So, uh, you know, just enjoy it and enjoy being around your friends and playing for your community and, uh, you know, enjoy the times together that you have these, these next, uh, hopefully for us, 14 weeks. And Coach, thanks for doing it. I know you got a busy schedule. We'll, uh, we'll be listening and watching tomorrow. For those that can't come, we've got it covered for you on the radio and the video stream. Hopefully we get a big crowd up on the uh, up on the hill tomorrow between Huntington and Spring Valley. Yeah, I would love for you to get out there and, and it just be already be crowded like a few hours before the game. That would be fun. But, you know, it's just uh, our, our community has been absolutely fabulous over the years, and I know they're going to come out and, support these great young men and, and uh, continue to support the Huntington program. Coach, we'll talk to you again soon. Good luck tomorrow night. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate you. That's Billy Seals, head coach of the Huntington Highlanders. We're going to take our next break, come back. We will get your text in 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're wrapping up today's edition of The Drive here at ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Our text line is open, 304-396-TALK. That's 304-396-8255. We got one more sleep until high school football for the majority for the majority of teams in West Virginia. We got one more sleep for the majority of teams in Ohio and Kentucky tomorrow for week two. We got two more sleeps for Ashland Tomcats football. Saturday, 7 o'clock, we'll have that game for you on our sister station, Cat Sports 93.3 and 1340. It's West Jessamine. And so that is the game on Saturday. And then we are a week plus away from the start of college football in Huntington as U Albany will be coming to town. Next Saturday, not this coming Saturday, next Saturday for the first game. Thundering Herd getting set for its season next week. We'll get into game week, and of course we'll hear from Coach Huff next week. His weekly comments, we will also get you a little bit better prepared for the game. As you Albany is already going to have a game under its belt. They'll play Fordham this weekend, and then we'll find out. A little bit more about this team next week. That's all coming up. And, of course, got a lot of football to get into. I mean, this weekend's going to be fun as well. We've got games this weekend. We've got games galore next weekend as well. And we're also going to have to start learning the rules, the new rule changes. We'll go over them in a little bit more detail this coming week. 
but there are some things that we do need to talk about as far as some of these rule changes are concerned. Yeah, some of them will be minor. Some of them, um, some of them might have an impact on the game. Some of them just, man, we'll see. But you know the big one. We've talked about this one, stopping and starting the clock, first downs. When t- Team A, this is basically how it was explained to me, when Team A, which is the offense, gains a first down, the clock will no longer be stopped to award a first down except with less than two minutes remaining in the second and fourth quarters. The change is effective immediately for Division One and Division Two, and it will be implemented in 2024 for Division Three. Also, the consecutive charge timeouts. Consecutive charge team timeouts will no longer be allowed by the same team in any individual dead ball period. Each team is entitled to three charge team timeouts during each half, with no more than one charge team timeout available per team per individual dead ball period. So that's going to be one to keep an eye out for. Also, extension of periods. A period shall be extended for an untimed down in the second or fourth quarter only if a penalty is accepted for a live ball foul. If there are offsetting fouls or an inadvertent whistle, the first and third quarters will not be extended, and any penalty enforcement will be carried over to the following quarter. So that's going to be one uh, we're going to keep an eye on as well. Uh, some of the other stuff, you know, a lot of it's back in. Like drones are not going to be allowed over the field or the team area when squad members are present within the playing enclosure. So there's going to be some stuff there. Uh, the field's going to be available to squad members for halftime warm-ups no later than three minutes prior to the second half kickoff. When any squad member enters the playing enclosure during the halftime intermission, a staff member from that team must be present on the field. Some other things there, some replay officials. So we're going to keep an eye on all of this. And, of course, I think the one we'll obviously be kind of keeping you know, the most watch on is the stopping and starting the clock. There will be people who will time all of this across the board in college football. I can't wait for those comparisons. How fast is the game week one? How fast is the game year to year? How many plays did we lose on average? I'm interested to see all of that. Will this speed up Marshall games? Will this make Marshall games faster? And, of course, I like the NFL style of football. I like the pace. I like NFL football. College is different. This doesn't mean that I don't like college. It's just I do enjoy a faster-paced game. Some of you don't. I think baseball has improved with the pacing. Some of you don't agree. That's fine. It is all preference, personal, and it is subjective, but I do like it. I think this will be fun. I honestly believe this. We'll see, though. We will find out if this is more of a – if it's going to change the pace drastically or we're just going to maybe clean up some clock management. It's just basically going to be better clock management for the game. I mean, some of you will stay football game four or five hours. Some of you are out of there at halftime. And, of course – There'll be some policies we need to go over next week as well with Marshall. And, again, some of that's going to be clear bag policy. That's going to be important. You're going to have to know that. So if you're not that familiar with the clear bag policy, we'll brush you up on all of that and make sure that you know what you need to bring as far as bag is concerned, what you can take into the stadium, what you need to know. We'll go over all of that next week. And, you know, we'll go over it throughout the season as well. Because, again, that's going to take some time for a lot of people to get used to. You know, me, you know, I might not be taking a bag, but if I needed to, you know, where can I get a bag? What kind of bag am I going to get? And, of course, Marshall's selling some bags as well, but you know, you're not limited to that. You don't have to just get a Marshall-branded bag. You can get some bag elsewhere and go on Amazon. Just make sure it's the right size and it's acceptable, and you should be fine. And with all of that said, that's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll be back with you tomorrow. It's Friday night, so we're going to have a lot more to cover Hopefully we can get it all done in one hour. I think we can, but that's for tomorrow. This has been today, and thanks for joining me here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930.